Frequency, Chapter 11, Part 4 Once again, Vinyl had to bite her tongue to keep from lashing out. She gave herself a few seconds to steady her breathing and calm her mind before saying, It's a big part of it. Cadence gestured invitingly. Tell me more. I guess I have to at this point, huh? Vinyl crossed her hooves and sulked. Fine, but it's stupid. Every pony expects me to, I don't know, do the right thing, I, I guess. They want me to hold Addie's hoof and tell her everything's going to turn up daisies. But I don't have any control over that. Her words came faster as her emotions picked up steam. Twilight said that her best guess is a 50-50 chance of Addie making it to Equestria alive. That's a coin toss. And that assumes the tests from the other meteorology sites can confirm her results. Which no pony can guarantee. The odds could be worse. What do they want me to do, lie? She slammed both of her hooves to the table and glared at the princess, who didn't even flinch. They want me to sit in front of the radio and tell Addie that everything's going to be safe and happy and glorious and good when we both know that might not be true. What kind of responsibility is that? And the more I think about it, the more I realize that everything I'm doing is pointless. Pretty words don't make up for death! Vinyl sat back and clutched her head, baring her teeth. I'm thinking about it. Goddesses be damned. I don't want to think about it. I don't want anything to do with it. Uh, what if Addie comes all this way just to die in the home stretch? There's so many fucking impossible things happening around her, things that can't be explained. It would be the perfect time for her outrageous luck to run out. And I don't want to be there. She huffed in place for a few seconds, her blood pounding in her ears and her hooves trembling. Slowly, she forced them down to the table and focused on calming herself. Tell me this, Vinyl. Cadence said, her voice gentle. Do you think the pain will be any more bearable if you choose to abandon this now? Vinyl chewed her lip and refused to meet her gaze. I... I... I, I, I don't know. I want to say yes, but... She buried her face in her hooves. I, I, I started this. I gave her hope. I don't want to watch that hope be ripped from her in her last seconds. Caden sighed. The sad thing about thinking is that we can't stop it. No matter how hard we might want to. But I can drown it out. Vinyl whispered. I can work. I can distract. I can stay at the clubs. Go back to that crazy lifestyle I had before I met her. And were you happy back then? Vinyl closed her eyes and tried to recall. So many nights bouncing to random beats, surrounded by anonymous ponies who didn't know or want to know her. And she had felt the same about them. Wasted nights avoiding her lonely, isolated apartments. Trying to write music just to make ponies look at her. There was so much noise, yet it had been nothing but static all along. For years, that was the only sound she ever really heard. Static. No. She muttered. Her hooves dropped back to the table, but she still couldn't look at Cadence. No, I wasn't. But I tricked myself into thinking it. <laughs> maybe, maybe I could do that again. Do you really want to? I sure as heck don't want to think. But you already care about Addie, don't you? At last, Vina looked up. She stared into Cadence's powerful purple eyes and thought her heart was being crushed. I... Cadence offered another one of those startlingly warm smiles. Regardless of what you do from now on, it's too late. Addie's become a part of you, Vinyl. No matter how far you run, how deeply you hide in the nightclubs, or how loud you turn up the music, you'll never really escape her. Vinyl didn't know what was worse. Hearing the words or knowing that they were true. She turned her head away to watch the drifting snow. Sometimes I wish I just kept my resolve. I hung up on Addie the first time we talked. I thought it was some foal's prank. I mean, if I just left it at that, I wouldn't have to think about how horribly wrong things might go. Cadence tilted her head. So why come back at all? Vinyl hunched over, her ears drooping. It's... It's personal. 
It's because of my dad, okay? Th that's as much as I want to say about it. And do you think your father would approve of you running away? I I'm not him! Vinyl slapped the table and glared at the ever-calm princess. Father was a great stallion, but I I'm not just a product of him! I'm also my mother's kid, and she was fucking trash! How can I ever rise to his level with her fucking blood holding me back, huh? Cadence's answer was swift and collected. How can you ever rise to his level if you refuse to try? I I'm scared, okay? Vinyl threw up her hooves even as she choked down a sob. What if I can't do it? What if I'm too much like her? The responsibility could overwhelm me, and then what'll happen? I don't want to end up hanging out a window with a rope around my neck! She buried her face in her legs and struggled to hold back the tears. I don't... I, t I don't want to be my mom. I don't want to be responsible. If I can't handle it, I'm no better than her. Addie deserves better than that. Flash too. They both deserve the best and I, I, I don't know if that's me. What if it's not? I can't stand the thoughts. I don't want to think. I don't want to be a disappointment. Muttering curses, she pressed her eyes against her hooves and tried to brush away the tears. She felt so foolish, breaking down in front of a princess like this. Why did she have to keep thinking about it? Why did Cadence make her think about it? She just wanted the fear to go away, yet it wouldn't. And she understood that now more than ever. A door had been jammed open, and through it came wave after wave of terrible possibilities, all riding on the back of her mother's pathetic visage. The tears eventually dried. Cadence said nothing the entire time. When Vinyl looked up, she found the princess watching her with a sad smile. What? What? Vinyl grumbled. Aren't you gonna put your wing over my shoulder and tell me it'll be alright? Cadence's smile didn't fade. I'm pretty sure that's not the kind of help you need. Well, good! Because that's exactly right! Vinyl sniffed and glared at the table. I can take care of myself. Of course. Cadence remained silent for a few seconds, perhaps waiting for Vinyl to speak again. When she didn't, she said, Had it occurred to you that you're about to prove yourself a failure? Vinyl's head snapped up, and her eyes grew wide. What? Cadence leaned on her foreleg, a hoof pressed to her cheek as she studied her. You're giving up. You're letting everything you've been working for over the past two years slip from your hooves. Is that a quality of your father or your mother? Vinyl thought she heard her heart hitting the floor. I... Oh, well... She bowed her head with a sigh. I guess I really am like her. You don't have to be. Cadence gestured to the door. You can go see Flash and talk to him. You can stop avoiding Addie. But that won't prove anything. Vinyl whispered. What if I fold under the pressure anyway? <laughs> That's why you have friends. Friends? Vinyl cocked her head with a frown. What friends? What can they do for me? Cadence raised an eyebrow. Flash is your friend, isn't he? Vinyl winced, glanced away, and muttered. I'd rather he be something else. Oh? I mean, sure, he's a friend. Her cheeks burned as she once again avoided Cadence's gaze. It was hard not to notice the princess's smirk, though. What of it? There's also Twilight, who is friends with pretty much every pony. Cadence tapped her chin. Of course Luna certainly qualifies. Vinyl blinked and looked up at her with wide eyes. Wait, they, they think I'm their friend? Oh, you disagree? No. Vinyl lowered her head once again. It's just their, you know, royalty. I never really thought I'd have friends in high places like that. Caden struggled. I understand. I once felt the same way. Of course we'd be remiss if we neglected Addie. She is your friend, is she not? Yeah, she is. Vinyl rubbed behind her ear as she thought on the subject. 
And I guess Velvet is my friend too. Probably should have admitted to that one a long time ago. Velvet? Cadence cocked her head. Yeah, she's a co-worker. Vinyl sighed, and met Cadence's gaze once more. Okay, I have friends. So what? So they can help you. Cadence's smile returned. If you think you don't have the strength, lean on them. Is that really hard to conceive? Vinyl rolled her eyes. <sighs> that sounds more like something Twilight would say. Cadence folded her hooves over her heart. What is friendship but another form of love? Love conquers all, huh? Vinyl fiddled with her hooves, lips set in a scowl. I'm not that fanciful. You're not so easy to convince, either. Cadence countered with a smug smile, but it steadily faded when Vinyl maintained her silence. The princess sighed and set her four hooves to the table. Some say that a pony's life is measured in regrets. The regret of overreaction, of being in the wrong place at the wrong time, of acting without thinking. You're going to feel pain no matter what you do, Vinyl. Vinyl shrank behind the table and chewed her lip. She tried to come up with some kind of response, but she had nothing. The choice is always yours to make. Cadence leaned forward, her magic cupping Vinyl's chin and making her look up. You should be rejoicing. <laughs> rejoicing? Vinyl jerked her chin from the telekinetic pull. Rejoicing what? My pain? My failure? Rejoicing in the choice. Cadence's gaze turned hard for the first time. You can choose to face the regrets and suffer alone, or you can embrace the love of your friends with open hooves. That's far better than what certain others have. Vinyl stared at her for several seconds. When Cadence's meaning finally hit her, her jaw dropped and she gasped. She had no idea her heart could hurt quite as much as it did right then. Addie, I... I completely forgot. Be glad he can choose to be alone. Cadence whispered. Some aren't so blessed. Vinyl could only sit there, her heart pounding and mind running rampant. She barely registered when Cadence stood and walked past for the door. The princess paused just before leaving her vision. Addie needs you, and Flash wants to be with you. You're not the only pony affected by your decisions, Vinyl. You've built bridges over the gaps of love, and the only way to pull out now is to set fire to those bridges. But if you do, remember that fire burns indiscriminately. Slowly, Vinyl turned to watch her go. Cadence left the door open, and Vinyl continued to stare long after her hoof steps faded away. Slowly, she turned back around to stare at the table. She could see Flash's tormented face, hear Addie's wretched sobs, all such painful sounds and horrible images. If she quit now, would it matter? She stood and approached the edge of the balcony. Snow still drifted by, silent and immaculate over the great city of Canterlot. The spires stood tall and solemn, offering no inspiration on this sad night. Vinyl gazed over the edge and wondered about the pain in her heart. Vertigo made her wobble. She dropped to her haunches. Her father would want her to press on, her mother would have jumped already. It was then that the epiphany struck. One way or another, Addie would cry. One way or another, Flesh would be miserable. If these things didn't happen because of her, they'd happen for some other reason. Vinyl couldn't stop that, regardless of what decision she made. As she gazed down at the city below, with a world swimming circles in her vision, her mind grew startlingly clear. One thought rose above all others. Spearing her consciousness like a light from Elysium itself. She had a choice, and she would not choose to be her mother. Before she understood what was happening, Vinyl was charging down the steps. Her heart hammered against her chest. Her breath came in gasps. She had to have reached the bottom in record time, sliding across the floor of the hall and almost slamming into the wall. Her head swiveled about until she caught the hint of a pink tail disappearing around a corner. Princess! She turned the corner in time to see Cadence turning back to her. Where... where's Flash? She asked in between gasps. Cadence's smile was so delightfully warm. I believe he just went off duty. Check the barracks. Vinyl had departed at a gallop before she'd finished the second sentence. Thank you. 
The doors and torches and tapestries flew by in a blur. Vinyl had been in this part of the castle enough to know her way blindfolded, and she didn't care who she bothered with the sound of her clopping hooves. She had just one thought on her mind, desperate and hopeful and determined all at once. For the first time in her life, she didn't feel like she was running away from something. No. This time she was running to it. She didn't even know what she'd do once she got there, but the run itself felt better than anything she'd ever known. The guards watched her pass with raised eyebrows. She flew by the front desk of the barracks without so much as a glance at the soldier on duty. Past a dozen identical doors, she turned a corner and spotted the only one that mattered. It seemed to shine like a beacon in the dark. When she tried to stop, she slid right past it and had to backtrack, but she wasted no time banging with both hooves on the door. Flash, open up! The time between that first knock and the door opening felt like ages. As soon as Vinyl saw Flash's disgruntled face with his blue mane all akimbo, her heart leapt into her throat and she leapt into him, knocking him to the floor of his room. <laughs> Vinyl, what the hell are you- I'm sorry! She clutched him and buried her head in his chest. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm not gonna give up and I do want to keep going, but I'm an idiot and scared and selfish. Tears were streaming down her cheeks. For once in her life, she didn't care. I shouldn't have pushed you in any way. I'm so sorry, Flash. Flash was silent for a while, but then his wings wrapped around her and he began petting her mane. Uh, hey, stop that. The vinyl scratch I know doesn't cry. <laughs> I do now. She mumbled, pressing against him. I didn't want to be alone, but I thought it was the only way. <laughs> I'm so stupid. He held her tightly. You're frustrating as all Tartarus final, but... <sighs> you know what? Kinda adds to your charm. Despite everything, she chuckled. Can you forgive me for being scared? His answer came with a swiftness that startled. Yeah. He rested his head on her shoulder. I think I could do that. But, Vinyl, what the hell happened? She pulled back and rubbed her eyes managing a warm smile upon seeing his confused face. I made a choice, that's all. He sat up and cocked his head. What choice? Eyes closed, Vinyl thought of Addie. Her smile broadened. To think and face the consequences. She leaned forward to nuzzle a shoulder. And not face them alone. Well, th <laughs> that's great. He reached up and stroked her cheek and Vinyl felt her heart flutter at the contact. When next he spoke, his tone was full of pleasure. That's really good, Vinyl. Oh, gag! A voice spoke from the door. Vinyl glanced back to see one of the guards looking in on them, rubbing his eyes and glowering. Some ponies are trying to sleep, you know? I gotta room you two. She smirked. Uh, we've got one, thanks. Her horn flashed, and the door slammed in his face. Hey! Flash made a stand. That wasn't very nice. What if- She caught him by the mane and jerked him down, planting a kiss right on his lips. The touch set sparks on her tongue, and Vinyl couldn't help wondering if there were jolts of energy flying from her mane. He returned the kiss, wrapping his hooves tight around her. Vinyl's heart pounded, her mind swimming in molasses, and she felt like she was walking on a cloud. At last, they parted. Flash had a familiar, stupid grin on his face as they both sucked in deep breaths. Ugh. He licked his lips, one ear hanging low and the other twitching. I forgot what I was gonna say. Me too. She grabbed him for a second kiss. Holy shit, finally it happened. Oh my god, that took so long, but they finally kissed. Now, if you're expecting anything else to happen, you just keep that in your pants, all right? Now, let's get on to our appropriate donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, Zarsex30, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Saru, Ryan, and Calidus. Matchvec, Jock, Lucy, Raiden, Runescythe, Wilt, Twinkie, Luigi, Chancer Crust, Big Smoke, Murder Princess, Little Mighty, Solar Symphony, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.